Hi, I'm Karen Hurt, and I'm here with our next edition of Asking for a Friend. So I thought this was perfect question to ask Lisa Fain, who is the author of Bridging Differences for Better Mentoring, which actually is not even out yet. It comes out February 24th, but she was kind enough to send me an advanced copy. And I was telling her, I said, you know, I've already made all these notes, so I can't wait to have the conversation with you. And this is a, a question that I really get quite frequently, which is people are in a mentoring relationship, but it's not quite sticking. So, you know, hey, I'm in a mentoring relationship, but it's a bit fizzling out. What can I do? So Lisa, what would you say? So first of all, thanks for having me, Karen. Ex uh, super excited to be here. You know, we, that is a question that's so common because there's a, several things that can happen that you have this feeling of fizzle. The first thing when somebody says, my, my mentoring relationship is fizzling out, is to say, do you feel like it's broken and there's not a connection? Or is it fizzling because you've gone as far as you can go with that particular mentor or mentee? So the first question to ask is, is it, are, we, are we finished we, and it's time to part? Or is there something that needs fixing? So if we're finished and it's time to part, the most important thing is to be really open about your appreciation for what you've accomplished in the mentoring relationship. If you're a mentor and you feel like you've helped the mentee as much as you can to really be candid with that and help them think through what's next for them. And if you're a mentee and you feel like you've either outgrown or learned what you can from the mentor to express appreciation for what you've learned and for who they are and the time they've given, and then talk about, ask that person, what do you think the next, my left, next learning goal should be and who should I be working with? So that's if you're, if you're finished. Yep or you feel like you've accomplished something. More common is, uh-oh, right? Something's wrong. Mm -hmm. So the question when you feel like something might be broken is, what do I do now? Here's what you don't do. You don't just let her die on the vine. Because if you let her die on the vine, first of all, you're not really honoring and acknowledging the time and commitment that's gone in the mentoring relationship. And you're not really learning from what happened when it died on the vine for your next mentoring relationship. And it can be really awkward. Yeah. So instead, what you do is you stay in conversation with your mentoring partner. That's great advice. And One of the things that I thought was really interesting was the levels of conversation that uh, mentoring relationships go through. And you, know, you can have more of the superficial conversation or you can go all the way up to dialogue. How, if you are stuck at the early and you're not loving it, you know, you're like, oh, I'm just getting a little bit out, but I just don't think we're having this deep conversation as a mentee. What, can you, what control do you have to help make it be a more productive dialogue? Yeah, that's such a great question. So in levels of conversation, in order to progress up the levels of conversation, you're building on learning and you're building on trust. And you know, so often mentees say, I don't have any control over it. It's all about my, my mentor. But what I want to emphasize and what your question gets at, Karen, is that the mentee really co-owns that. So the, so it's the most important thing is for the mentee to say, what do I need in order to increase my learning and build trust? And then here's the key is to ask for that and to state it really as a need. And it might look something like, Karen, if you were my mentor saying, you know, Karen, we've, we've had um, really transactional conversations in our last several meetings where you've asked me what's going on. And I appreciate that momentum, but I actually would really learn better if you sent a qu that question to me ahead of time so I could think about it and come forward, right? That's the learning piece. The trust piece is take the time to connect. And maybe it's not connecting around your learning goal necessarily, but connecting at the beginning of each, of each meeting. So maybe it's a power question, right? What's something that really excites you? What's your ideal day? Um, mm. You know, what's your superpower, right? Questions like that. And each of you ask and answer them and you can start to build trust so those conversations around goals are on a foundation of connection and can really build towards a more powerful conversation. Oh, that's fantastic. Any one last piece of advice that you think is sort of the super secret to having a fantastic mentoring relationship? Yeah, continue to have ongoing feedback and this, this idea of staying in conversation, which means really co-owning it and continuing to connect if you have an environment of continuous feedback, these conversations will be easy. 
right? right. And um, really open the door for that. So that is really the secret to long lasting and effective mentoring relationships. Nice. Well, thank you so much. It was great to talk with you. Uh, mentoring is so important. And, you know, I always laugh. I say, you know, at my funeral, the, all these people are going to show up and say, oh, well, I was her mentor, you know, because I <laughs> have had so many wonderful mentors over the years. And I, I think that's good uh, to, you don't like, to your point, you don't need to just stick with one. You can, it's, it's good to, to weave in and out of different mentoring relationships, depending on what you need. So, yeah. Absolutely. Great. Absolutely. It's a great legacy to leave. And actually one, my co-author is Lois Zachary, who's also my mother. Oh, and, how about uh, one, that? One that? I've learned from her is really that legacy of being a mentor lifelong. Um, uh, so, and she's been the recipient of that as have I. So thanks for your, for your commitment to this, Karen. I appreciate nice. it. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you.